Hi there and welcome to my channel. My name is Lucian Gavrilouk. Today's topic is very interesting and it is required by code, NFPA 70, which is the National Electrical Code in the US. We will be discussing the topic of arc flash, which is covered by NFPA 70E, Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace. Ultimately, our client wants to make sure that they are OSHA compliant and that they follow NFPA 70E, which has guidelines on how to stay compliant. What is your client after? The arc flash hazard label, of course. NFPA 70E states what information needs to be on this label. Here is a sample arc flash label. It shows incident energy, working distance, shock hazard exposure, voltage, class of insulating gloves, limited approach boundary, restricted approach boundary. Here I want to make an observation. With the NFPA 70E revision 2015, the prohibited approach boundary has been removed from the standard. A label may show only the incident energy and corresponding working distance or the r -flash PPE category in the tables 130.7 C15 shown in NFPA 70E, but not both. Another piece of information is site-specific PPE. Let's get started with ETAP. The latest version of ETAP has made it easy to perform this calculation. I'm currently running version 19. Click on the appropriate module and in this case it is the arc flash button. We recognize that the buttons on the right hand side of the canvas have changed. The button we are most interested in is the run our flash IEEE 1584. But to be able to run this study, we need to make sure that the appropriate study options have been selected. So let's click on the briefcase, edit study case. Just like the short circuit study case, we need to fault some buses and make the appropriate selections on this page. Next, we need to decide which standard we're going to choose. In this example, I've chosen the latest IEEE 1584 standard 2018. IEEE 1584 is undergoing revisions on how to calculate the incident energy based on the construction of the electrical equipment. And so my friend, you as the R-Flash electrical engineer, need to know what is the construction of this equipment. Next, click on the Clearing Time tab, and here, for this example, I left the ETAP default. Click on the Parameters tab. On this page, you must approve PPE levels in order to get our flash labels. Make sure that the PPE levels are set. In this case, the labels are based on NFPA 70E 2018 tables. Click Approve. Oh, click OK and then OK again. Now we can look at adjustments. Make sure the appropriate options are selected. Next, go to the Short Circuit tab. Again, review this page and make sure that the study is performed with the correct selections. Click the Alert button and make the appropriate selections. Click OK. And we are ready to perform our arc flash calculation. Click the Run Arc Flash button and the software performs the calculation. The PPE level, Arc Flash boundary, and Incident Energy are shown by default. To get the Arc Flash labels, click on the Report Manager and then select the Label English tab. We will do PDF labels, so select the PDF option. Next, we need to select a typical label. I will choose the 4x6 Warning 1 bus. Click OK. And there you go, you've just created your first arc flash labels. In this video, I've shown you how to generate arc flash labels. If you found this video helpful, write me in the comment section and give me a thumbs up. You may also go to my website, ipa-epc.com. Again, thanks for watching.